Hello everyone! Welcome to Stonks Music. My name's Ollie, and today we're going to be having a look at Cabinet in this deep dive session. Let's go! <laughs> Right, so here we are, back in the Ableton manual. Let's have a look at what they've got to say. Note, the cabinet effect is not available in intro, light, and standard editions. So this is a sweet only one, guys. Cabinet is an effect that emulates the sound of five classic guitar cabinets. Developed in collaboration with Softube, Cabinet uses physical modelling technologies to provide a range of authentic sounds with optimised mics and mic positioning. The speaker chooser allows you to select from a variety of speaker sizes and combinations. The chooser's entries indicate the number of speakers and the speaker size in inches. For example, 4x12 means four 12-inch speakers. In the real world, more and larger speakers generally mean higher volumes. The microphone chooser changes the position of the virtual microphone in relation to the speaker cabinet. Near on axis miking results in a bright focus sound while near off axis is more resonant and a bit less bright. Choose the far position for a balanced sound that also has some characteristics of the virtual room. So we get a nice little picture here just explaining what on axis and off axis is. If any of you guys have actually uh, done any miking up of cabinets or mic'd up drums you'll know how important uh, this kind of thing is nowadays all of us bedroom producers i plug directly di i very very rarely uh, that's a practice amp really i everything's on the computer nowadays so i'm probably quite bad bad at micing up now because i've just not done it in years um so yeah it's all virtual it's all in there the switch below the microphone chooser toggles between a dynamic and condenser mic Dynamic mics are a bit grittier and commonly used when close micing guitar cabinets because they are capable of handling a much higher volume. Condenser mics are more accurate and are more commonly used for micing from a distance. Of course, cabinet's virtual condenser mic won't be damaged by high volume levels, so feel free to experiment. The output switch toggles between mono and stereo, dual processing. Note that in dual mode, cabinet uses twice as much CPU. So it's the same as when we were chatting about amp. When it does its stereo, it literally just duplicates itself. So it is running the VST twice. Cabinet tips. Here are some tips for using cabinet. Amps and cabinets. Guitar cabinets are normally fed by guitar amps. For this reason, cabinet is paired with amp and the two are normally used together. But you can also achieve interesting and exotic sounds by using amp and cabinet separately. That's copy paste from their amp up there, isn't it? Oh well, multiple mics. A common studio technique is to use multiple mics on a single cabinet and then adjust the balance during mixing. This is easy to do by using Live's audio effect racks. Try this, configure one instance of cabinet as you like, put the cabinet into an audio effect rack, duplicate the rack chain that contains the original cabinet as many times as you like, add in the additional chains choosing a different microphone setting and or mic type, and adjust the relative volumes of the racks chains in the racks mixer. Right, so I reckon we'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna run a few tests, see what we have, and then I'll see you guys in a sec. <laughs> Right, so here we are with the results. Same as last time, I started with my sub bass. And then we've chucked amp on for a few of those extra high end frequencies. So that is this here, no cab. This is our sub amped through the amp. So first up is our one by 12 near on axis dynamic. So that is taking a dynamic microphone, something akin to an SM58 and putting it on axis directly in front of the speaker. Okay, that's quite interesting. So you can see we lose a lot of that high end. Looks like above 1K has been affected the most. And then almost nothing above 5, 6, 7K is that? 
Yeah, 6K is almost all gone. And you see, we lost a good bit in our in our actual sub base as well. That's gone from minus 28, minus 30 to, where's that gone? Minus 36. We lost a good few DB there. Um, it looks like these 100, 200 have come up, but I don't think they have. It's just that other, everything else has come down. May have moved up a little bit. See, it's just on that line and then just above that line. But really, those high-end frequencies, they've been attacked quite a lot here. So the 2x12, it's almost the same. I'm sorry they don't quite line up. Um, some weird little thing happening here at 3K, weird little uh, dip, but it's pretty much doing the same thing. Dynamic mic on axis, it's just two speakers instead of one. So the four, mm, this is interesting. So again, almost the same thing, but now we've got four of those speakers. Seems to be adding some of those frequencies back in the three kilohertz range. So let's just compare that to the one by 12. You can see above 1K is a bit lacking in the 1x12. The 4x12, on the other hand, has a bit more of that there. And it looks like it's losing some around the 300-400 range. Now, I'd love to be able to tell you why that actually is and go into some real detailed information about speakers and audio acoustics. But that is a whole load of maths that I honestly don't even really know about. Um, that's a, that's a whole university degree you can do on acoustics and why these things happen. That's all the science that's gone in behind it. Um, the 4x10, again, not much difference. You can see it's returning. When you've got four speakers, it seems to bring in more of that 1 to 3K as opposed to one or two speakers seems to be uh, lacking a bit down there. This is also ducked the... Um, 700 to 1k looks like it's doing something a bit or even 400 and compared to our original so you can see using the near on axis dynamic is really getting rid of a lot of that high end uh, last off let's try the 4x10 base so the 4x10 base seems to be doing a good boost uh, between that 100 to 200 region <clears throat> well, the 1x12 took the subs below 100 off. 2x12 didn't affect the subs too much. 4x12 seems to have affected them quite a bit. I can see that's moving again as well, though. Let me try that. And it's still affected them quite a bit. The 4x10, same. And the 4x10 base, I have to move that down. So the 4x10 bass has definitely boosted 1 to 200. Definitely boosted that. And we've not lost any of our sub, really, as compared to the others. So next up is the off-axis. Compare this again to our no-cab. So 1x12 off-axis microphones. So that's still the dynamic. Rather than pointing at the speaker, it's off to the side. So, as expected, we're still losing a good bit of that high end. We don't appear to be losing as much bass, um, but there is a big scoop between the one to two as well there, one to two kilohertz, you can see that scoop. And just some weird three kilohertz totally gone and between four and five is totally gone. So the two by 12 in comparison. So two by 12 loses everything above three kilohertz pretty much. Um, a few little differences here in the 300, 400 region. The subs and everything down there is pretty much staying the same. The 4x12. Hmm, that's interesting again. So nothing really above the 4K. There's a few of these little spikes. Still got that between the 1 and 2 kilohertz, that dip, which wasn't there before. Um, and it's accentuated between uh, 2 and 3 kilohertz quite a bit, actually. The sub is pretty much the same. If anything, it's lost a few dB. And that 100 to 200, I think, has come up a little bit as well. 4 by 12. 4 by 10. 
So 4x10, again, smaller speaker, 10-inch cone rather than 12. Nothing above 3 kilohertz. Others uh, frequencies don't seem as affected. It's a little bit of a boost, if anything, compared to the 4x12. You can see we are losing a bit on our sub there. And the 100 to 200 is definitely being boosted. But really noticeable, there is nothing above that 3 kilohertz range. That's all completely gone. So let's check the 4x10 bass version. And the same thing, not really much above that 3, but you can really see that, that steep curve there. So it looks like between 100 and 200 has definitely been boosted. A good few dB, actually. Where are we there? 33 to 24 dB. The sub, on the other hand, seems to have stayed relatively still. So that 4x10 bass has really boosted that 100 to 200 frequency. For me, that wouldn't be very good because that's that space is occupied by my kick drum most of the time. So if I was using this to reamp anything, that's definitely something to be careful of. The last one for the dynamics are the far mics. Now straight away, it's pretty obvious to me what these are going to do. If your microphone is not close, my microphone's down there. If it's not close, you probably won't be able to hear the thing as well. That's just how this stuff goes. So the 1x12, you can see we lose all of those sub frequencies. The 100 to 200 remains pretty much untouched. That's almost exactly in the same position. Um, all the way up to 1K, and then we see the same kind of thing again. Not really much above the uh, 6K range at all, and not much between 1 and 2K either. That's all been taken away. Uh, 2K to 4K, 5K there. It actually hasn't done too much, but it's definitely boosted some of these frequencies around here, you can see. So next up, the 2x12. It looks less uh, less harsh. I think that's why we've got these frequencies between 1 and 2K have come back. We're still losing a good amount on our base here. Um, it looks like this between 100 and 300, no, 200 and 300, sorry, has been uh, boosted. That's now the predominant, I'd call that the fundamental now. That's the, the loudest frequency we have. 4 by 12 a bit nicer again. It seems to be you start adding more speakers and you maintain more of your sound. I suppose that makes sense because they're emulating having more speakers. It would play louder. Your microphone is going to pick up something coming out of four speakers better than it's going to pick something coming out of one speaker. So the 4x12, we see the same thing, not much above 6K. This 1 to 2K range has been decimated quite a bit. Um, not as much of a loss on our subs, though. Oh, but I would definitely still say that these fundamentals have, the, these frequencies have become the fundamentals now. 4x10 bass. 4 by 10 base, you can see we've lost between the 1 and 2, or the 2 and 3 again, sorry. Nothing above 6. Um, subs come down a bit. It has uh, gently boosted these 200, even though it's still the slope down, 200 to 1k has been boosted. Just compare that to the original. Yeah, they've definitely have been boosted. And 4x10 bass is the last one. So what I've seen so far as a rule of thumb is the 4x10 bass will boost your 100 to 200 and make that your fundamental. So let's just check from original. Uh, fundamental, guys. The loudest frequency in your sound is the fundamental frequency which will give you your tone. So if you're fundamental, the loudest frequency is a G, then your note is going to be a G. So we can see here, our fundamental is down here in the subregion. Once we start using that 4x10 bass, or any of, yeah, any of these 4x10 basses, the fundamental becomes the 100 to 200 region. Which makes sense, because if you were playing a bass guitar, these frequencies, they're still there. You know, you play a large show, you can always feel the bass. But this is what you're hearing. They're that's where there's going to be more note definition. So that does it for the dynamic mics. Next up is the condenser. So let's have a look at the 1x12 near. So that's on axis again. And the condenser. So let's compare that down here to the 
near dynamic. Not much down here really. Um, looks like the condenser's picking up slightly less, but up here above 1K is where we notice the difference. So the condenser is picking up a lot more between the two and three with that dip off at the three. And then it's still it's got these slightly bigger humps. So let's compare that to the original quickly. So yeah, it's definitely done some weird boosty stuff here. And even though it looks like these are boosted, I think they've actually just cut away and left those frequencies. So whatever it's doing, there's a major cut at 5 hertz. There's quite a cut at three, uh, 5 kilohertz, sorry, and at 3 kilohertz. And I, th I suppose that makes sense when you're amping up and doing stuff. They are the ranges which the human voice and the human ear are quite attuned to. So if you get a build-up of frequencies in 5K or 3K, that's very noticeable to the human ear. So next up is our 2x12 near condenser. Bit of a change here in our 300, 400. It's dipped that a little bit. Have we lost some more of the sub? Yeah, I think we lost a bit more of our sub. And same shape happening here. It's just moved a little bit. That predominant frequency is still you know, 1.5 or whatever you say with that. That wasn't there at all in the original. 4x12, uh, as we'd expect, we start getting more speakers and there's some more of that high end is uh, is present. So now we've lost that funny shape now. That big dip has kind of come back. Um, still losing after our 5k here and absolutely nothing above the 6. 4x10. Hmm. Brought our sub down again a good bit. Gap between 1 and 2. And again, nothing up here. Let me guess before I press our 4x10, this is going to boost our 100 to 200 above and make that the fundamental. So you can see we lost a bit of our sub again. 100 to 200 is the big boosty. Absolutely nothing between the 1 and 2k comparatively. It's brought that right down. Nice kind of little hump here. A few little shapes that uh, have been added. And again, 6k seems to be the cutoff. So next is the near off axis. So we start with the 1x12 and we can see here it has decimated around our 2k. Nothing at all here. So when you move off axis that's really affecting those high end frequencies. Um, there's What's the term for it? Proximity effect. Decimated our 2 kilohertz and you can see there's nothing and you can see there's nothing above here, so it's really, really is getting rid of those high end frequencies. Our sub has come down, and I would argue that 100 to 200 or the 200 to 300 is where our fundamental is sitting now. So the 2x12, you can see adding a few more frequencies up here, we get a bit more back in our 1 to 2 range. Compare it to our original. You see the amount we lose on the sub. Not really a boost on there. That's still below that line. It's just that the uh, span itself is moving. So a lot of the changes seem to be appearing above the 1K range for, for these. 4x12. Now that does look quite different. That may be where I've pressed hold because there was that movement in the base. That might have been a slight difference. But you see this cut here at... 600 hertz, that's a massive cut. It's like a, a, it ramps down and then ramps down again, you can see. Whereas here we've got our nice kind of gradual, the 4x12 condenser near off axis. It's kind of got a, a big dip in the subs and then this double ramp down. And again here, up, down, up, down, that weird... Um, Lump here again between two and three, which we had some of these. You see they're there. Four by ten. So you can see again, one, two kilohertz. Got rid of that quite a bit. Between two and just below three, there's that nice big chunk. And almost, I'd say this four by ten, nothing above three kilohertz. A little bit of dirt here that's uh, popping through, but 
not much at all. 4x10 base version, we're going to see that fundamental jumping up again. Quite a nice slope off to our 1. Uh, definitely much less here again than originally. But that's a nice kind of tail off with a few little but 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 that little bit at three. See this big bell or whatever they're doing to take notch out there. Um, and it does go up to 6k again with a little spike and then nothing. And lastly is our condenser far. So 1 by 12. Pretty much nothing above here, above the 6 kilohertz again. Between 1 kilohertz and 2 kilohertz, we've got that massive dip. Sub has come down by quite a lot, as expected when your microphone is far away. Um, and in fact, the 300 to 1000 seems to be the least affected bit here. And we've lost some on our 100, 200. 2 by 12. Interesting, again, even more of that sub bass has been lost. We've lost quite a lot of that 100 frequency as well. Good 3 dB. And this 200 to 300 has now become the main fundamental. That's the loudest frequency we have. Almost nothing between our 1 and 3K. And a uh, big old gap above the 5K as well. 4 by 12. see more speakers giving out more sound so we, we kind of keeping some of that let's say that they're still pretty high up in the fundamentals coming down nothing between 1 and 2k again I say nothing uh, a lot less but we do have some nice between 3 and 6 some nice frequencies there um, actually boosted quite a bit just above the 2k here it's interesting and just above 3k here The 4x10, you see we lost loads of our sub here, nothing above 4k, still got that dip in our 1 to 2k, don't think it's affected that 100hz too much, or at all actually, that's still just under the line. Um, brought up the 200 to 300 ever so slightly. And lastly, 4x10 bass, as expected, the 100 to 200 frequency is at the top. Rolling off again all the way down to one kilohertz where we've got that gap and then these few little bits between two and five kilohertz. So let's have a quick listen to the differences of some of these. Let me turn cabinet on and I will grab span up here. Up there, up there. Right, so let me go to near on axis, dynamic and We'll come to our 4x10 bass and let's listen to the difference. I think that's an amazing difference, really, to tell you the truth. Um, I don't know, I'm just thinking out, I'm thinking out loud here. So if we see we've got Nothing above 6k, so what if I turn this on, flip it, go to 6,000. More, let's just compare them again. You're losing a bit here as well, look. 800 to 1k. So let me grab an EQ8 quickly. I'm just wondering, um, is it just applying a bunch of EQ, essentially? I don't know. If I group these two, control G. Boosting some more up here, I think, maybe as well. So here's our original. Here is 
cabinet, 4x10 base, near on axis dynamic. And here is me replicating that with a couple of EQs. So if you don't have suite and you don't have cabinet, you can try and use these uh, as maps for changing your EQ to try and emulate what it would be like. So if you wanted a 4x10 bass amp near on axis condenser mic, this is our original and this is that. So you'd want to duck below here a little bit, boost here, cut between the one and two, get rid of everything above 6K. And that's gonna kind of be emulating what's going on with cabinet. So, what would I do with cabinet? What do I use it for? Actually, what the manual said is probably the best idea for it, really. So if you're beefing up a sound, there's a few ways that you can try and do it. One of the ways I do is duplicate, pan hard right, pan hard left. And then you can mess around with the uh, frequency of one of them, kind of change them a little bit. Give you a bit more stereo width and presence. But the other way that they were saying was quite interesting is by using different cabinet models. So I'm just going to make a group here, like the manual said, and project file will be in the description. So if you don't have cabinet, I'm assuming it just won't open for you, unfortunately. But if you do, feel free to use this to reamp any of your things. So give me a minute and I'm just going to go ahead and build this. Right, so we're back and I've built this cabinet reamper rack. So all I've done here is exactly what the manual said to do. I've taken all of the different versions of cabinet and racked it all up. So I've started, I've put all of the volumes down at minus infinity so it doesn't blow your head off. And the macros here don't do anything. I've only mapped them to give us some labels. So at the top here, we've got our dry channel. Below that, we have each of our different versions of cabinet, 1x12, 2x12, 4x12, 4x10, and 4x10 base. And each of them are blue on axis, orange off axis, red far, and these ones are our dynamic. And then down here, the teal is on axis, off axis, and far again, and they are all on the condenser mode. Now I've left this on dual output, so if your computer is breaking, you could turn them to mono output, because essentially here we have a lot of versions of cabinet running. So what this would be good for, if we just play it and we're gonna turn up the dry. That's our standard signal. And now we can start mixing in some of these other reamped versions. So straight away, we want one of these far ones. And I'm gonna say the condenser would be nice. Um, and let's take the condenser one from the four by 10 base. So it's our base amp mic room mic essentially so we've got a bit of our dry in there add a little bit of that room in so let's just listen to that room on its own and let me mute that mute that room so we'll get the span up quickly just to have a look and see what's going on So that's just the dry signal on its own. That's with some of the reamped far. So we can add some more of this stuff in here. Let's say on axis, we'll go for a four by 10 again. So all that's doing is taking our original signal. We've dropped it down quite a bit. So it's going to be quieter in this reamp, but you can hear that it's really affecting the sound in a way more akin to reamping a guitar would actually do. So let's do a quick before and after. That's very dry, very upfront, and then we'll listen to it reamped. You can see there we've lost a lot of our sub. There's that bass there, and then it teeters off. And we got this here. So the uses for this are quite varied. Um, it's not a technique that I use that often, but when you're doing sound design, it can be really nice if you're getting stuck in a rut and you kind of keep creating the same sounds. 
a bit of this can really help just kind of give it a bit more space. So when I was thinking about it, I thought, oh yeah, I'd like to use the bass amp and I'd use the far condenser and also let's do the off axis, on axis, sorry. But if you're not thinking about it and you want to just go what sounds good, you can totally have a mess around and just see what you get, you know? So you can hear how adding these slight variations, it's beefing up the sound a little bit. It could be making it muddy as well. I suppose you, you might be worrying about phase issues or anything, but it, they should be enough of a difference. The way that it's being reamped and the modeling that's going on, there should be enough of a difference not to cause any phasing issues. If we look at the correlation meter up here, that's still all the way on the right. That's saying there's a, a totally mono, mono signal. It's not got any phase cancelling, it's not going over here into the red. So that's on a big bass what it would sound like. Let's just take this quickly and um, I don't know, should we, do we have a guitar chop anywhere? Have some chops? Let's just grab this guitar lead and chuck our reamper on there. So let's just listen. All of them off. So we just got a dry. Just kind of helps put the instrument in its own space. So feel free to use this rack, guys, however you want. Just be aware, it probably is going to use a good bit of your CPU. If you need to, like I say, turn these guys onto mono mode. And yeah, hopefully you guys will enjoy that. So if you don't have cabinet, I will be making all of these files available if you check the link in the description. So if you wanted to, you know, for instance, try and emulate what a uh, 4x10 bass amp sounded like with a near on-axis condenser mic, you could check out this image and go, right, I'll cut all of that and just kind of force this EQ onto your tracks. It won't be the same result, but it might kind of get you halfway there. All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I've been Ollie. As always, don't forget, project files in the description and like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, do all those things, and I'll catch up with you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.